Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Phys Ed Summit 2020. My name is Jace Ferguson, and this is a new presentation on purposeful planning. We are in a very unique situation here right now, globally, um, just with everything reacting to the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is a great time for some professional development and let's learn a few things or two. Now, I'm actually sending you a recording, but I'm gonna be in the chat room at the same time, talking with you, answering questions. So feel free to just engage, ask some questions. I'm gonna be there to answer them and then hopefully we can have a breakout session after, the, after our presentation to talk more if you like. So let's get this on the road. All right, first off, this, First off, thank you for joining me this morning uh, or afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, this is my presentation. We're going to be talking about purposeful, purposeful planning in physical education and how I have actually rolled this out. First off, how I was rolling out live my, with my, in my classes before the pandemic and how it's even modified or even adjusted during the pandemic where we've moved to a virtual distance learning model. So first off, a little bit about me. So first off, my name is Jace Ferguson. Uh, I graduated from University of Alberta back in 2006 with my Bachelor of Education in Secondary Education and Physical Education. And then I went and received my Master's of Science, Recreation and Sports Science at, at, in Ohio University in 2013. But from 2006 to 2015, I was teaching uh, physical education. I was a physical education specialist in Alberta, Canada, working in different, uh, different levels of schools, working from rural schools to urban schools, small schools, big schools. Uh, and then in 2013, 2015, I was part of the Health and Physical Education Council of Alberta, so that HPEC. And within that, I was in various roles from just uh, being a regional representative, all the way up to being a vice president of pedagogy and curriculum development, where we operate a few, few programs and tasks to hopefully make te teaching physical education meaningful and purposeful in Alberta. Uh, and then in 2015, well, we, my wife and I decided to take the move to Dubai, where we've been internationally teaching since then. So from 2015 to 2019, I was working at the Universal American School in Dubai, which was an American IB school. And then 2019, so in August of 2019, we moved to the International School in Macau, where they are now using, they have been using Alberta curriculum. So now I'm back working with the Alberta curriculum that I was using for the most part of my career. But in 2016, I started creating my own website called Tin Can Physical Education, where I share some resources, share some thoughts, share some theories, research-based practices, and things like that, hopefully in the, in the hopes of bringing high quality physical education back into the classroom. You can also find me on social media. <clears throat> so I have my website, it's at tincanphysed.com, where I have my blog posts, resources, webinars. So this webinar will actually post it on there when it's being published. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Grand Muchacho. Uh, there's a story behind that, and there's one thing I refuse to change the name because it represents just fun and engagement. It's, it's the story behind it's all about play, being having fun during physical activity and sport. So I refuse to change it because that's just part of who I am. I love being fun, I love being active, and it's just who I am. But on Twitter, I usually share a lot of pedagogy, share some chats, some content. But you can also find me on, on other social media aspects as well. So Instagram and Facebook, you can find me just at Tin Can Physical Education. This is where I'm sometimes sharing the day-to-day -day happenings of what's going on in my classes. So what are today's topics? What are we gonna be talking about today? <clears throat> First off, we're going to be challenging traditional thought, exploring what is traditional thought and how things have potentially changed with a recent uh, ad adaptation to the COVID-19 crisis and also just bringing in the research into physical education. I'm going to break down the concept of purpose. We're going to take application into practice. So we're taking this idea of bringing purpose into our planning and well, how does that actually look like and actually show you what the structure of purposeful planning would look like. So first off, let's take a look at some traditional thought out there. So <clears throat> number one thing that I often see with students, and especially when I come to a new school where I'm their new teacher, I've never had them before, or when I receive new students, is I always ask, get this question asked by me, what are we doing today? And this question actually really bothers me because it focuses only on the here and now, well, what was going on before, or what's going to happen potentially ahead. Focusing on what's going on is just that fixed mindset, growth, first that growth mindset. What are we gonna do right now, sir? What are we gonna be doing today? Not looking at what did we do in the past, but what are we gonna be doing in the future and how does this apply to traditional or not traditional to our previous learning? And there's also a lot of one and done planning. So reflection is not consistent. I often ask students to reflect throughout our lessons and if they've never had me as a teacher before, this is actually a very difficult task for them because they are shocked when they're like, I have to reflect what's going on. I've never done this before. So reflection isn't consistent. So the 
a lot of the focus is on what we are doing in the classroom. So students are going to be focusing on what we have been doing in the classroom. Professionals have been focusing on what have we been doing in the classroom and not looking deeper into the enduring understanding or the bigger picture. So sometimes this is also de developed for evaluation purposes, curriculum accountability. I know a lot of our assessments or especially if we're in private schools, did you cover the curriculum and did you do it effectively? It's not why did you cover it this way, it's did you get your things done, you had to get done, are you checking off some boxes? So sometimes it's just that evaluation tool that schools use is you need to have this done. It's more focusing on the what. What have you done? You have to plan the once and then we sit back and don't reflect on it. We've also been fighting for importance. So the focus on test scores and not student progress. So if you look at the big picture of things, a lot of the schools are often focused on test scores. There's lots of research out there and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you with the research. There's lots out there saying that physical education is often the cornerstone to student success. This actually with physical movement and wellness and the whole balance of things, this actually helps students be better set to be successful academically. But we're still in a place where it's the math, the sciences, the humanities, the core subjects, which are often given more importance and more professional development, where there sometimes it's okay to just have a teacher just doing activities and not trying to not trying to foster further growth and development with our students. So often PD and funding are often limited by some schools. I know a lot of physical education teachers say it's like, well, I, I don't get any PD funding because I teach physical education. So we have a lot of traditional thoughts and uh, almost stereotypes that stop us from progressing forward to bring meaning to a whole new level. But the one way I looked at challenging traditional thought is I've actually taken a look at what does physical education look like? And if you could take it to the most simplistic viewpoint, it almost comes down to three different areas. We look at the physical and support literacy aspect of it. We look at the activity and movement aspect of it and the wellness and health and wellness literacy aspect of it as well. Now together, these can make an excellent physical education program. Apart, they can make an okay physical education program or lesson. So not only do our lessons, our lessons don't need to hit all three of these, but as physical education teachers, our planning needs to almost reflect how can we, how can we integrate all three of these concepts so that we're doing the best we can and trying to give our students the most in-depth understanding they can have when they walk out of our classroom. Some of us may be only just in this moment right now looking at activity and movement. I know with the COVID-19 crisis, a lot of the, a lot of the building where the, the content being pushed out has been, well, even Joe Wick. Now, nothing wrong with what he's doing, but a lot of people are like, hey, I have an activity I can do for my kids. Here's your video, there's our activity. But how does that connect to a bigger purpose? How does that connect to a larger idea? So if we want to break down those sections even more, so if we're looking at physical and sport literacy, this is where we develop the understanding to be active competitive for life. And I really debated about putting in physical and sport literacy in the same place because often we hear sport literacy is like, well, physical education shouldn't be a place for athletes to shine. Those are our high end students who are often our athletes. We still need to have somewhere where they can be successful and be challenged and be challenged and grow, but also we need to have all the other students to challenge and grow as well and progress. So develop the understanding to be active and competitive for life. Develop the motivation to be active and competitive for life and develop the competencies to be active and competitive for life. So these are the things where we're looking at the, the understanding, the cognitive part of it, the motivation, the behavioral, and then also the competencies. So the physical abilities to do the skills. A lot of athletes will not move on to higher levels because they lack the skill development. Some people may not take, take part in specific activities in, in, their early, in their later years because they do not have the skills to, to do that. And then we have health and wellness literacy. So develop the understanding to be healthy and well for life. And develop the skills to maintain a healthy and balanced lifestyle. Developing the behaviors to be healthy and well. Understand and modify wellness levels. So even just understand what is our wellness and what does that look like? Sometimes that is often glossed over or completely missed because we're too busy focusing on here are the sports, here are the, here's our traditional game thought we often don't touch on the health and wellness literacy. This, this is like almost like the hidden curriculum, which is in often a lot of physical education programs. And then we have activity and movement. So have the students moving and having fun. We're increasing the social engagement and activity, developing fundamental movement skills, developing sport specific skills, and develop critical and tactical thinking. So we actually have the doing, the thinking, and moving forward on that. A lot of these things can be physically seen in the classroom. So if we looked at in the classroom, we could see a lot of activity and movement 
but developing those physical support literacy comprehensive comprehension and health and wellness literacy comprehension that is something that's seen behind the scenes people can't just walk in our classrooms and see health and wellness literacy being developed this they are they're going to see the activity and movement so how do we use all these three different areas to produce a well-structured lesson that has purpose and meaning So how we do that is we actually start with why, and I apologize I'm moving my camera around. This is, I'm actually using Zoom for the first time. I usually use Google Meets. Anyway, so the concept of purposeful planning revolves on the idea of like starting with why. So I actually started with like one after I read the book from Simon Sinek, and it actually is a business book about leaders where how do you empower people to lead, to follow a leader? And a lot of people start with the what. So this whole, this whole visual here actually takes his book and unpacks it quite well. But what really got me was the golden circle. So the golden circle is the concept of starting with why. Start with why first. A lot of us start with the what. So when we get into class is, and I use it, and I want to use this with the purpose of that is, what the hell do you do? What, what is going on in your class in a day to day? When people walk in, when, we, when we're evaluated, we're getting evaluated on what is going on in that moment in time. A lot of us start with the what. What are we doing today? What are we, what are we, what's going on? What activities are we gonna be doing? What lessons, what skills, what drills? And then we look at the how. So how do you do what you do? This is where we have our skill development. This is where we have our learning opportunities. Okay, we look at tactical critical thinking and physical education. How do you play a game effectively? How do you develop a fitness plan effectively? There we look at the how, but then we look at the why. So why do you do what you do? So often when we start with the what first, the why gets taken, put on the back burner. And sometimes we even miss instru or covering what, why are we doing this? So the whole idea is to change our concept of thinking. Start with our why. So why do we do what we're doing and what is the purpose? Why are we playing volleyball? Why are we playing basketball? Start with the why, start with that critical central idea. Why are we doing this? And then that actually builds further, further out as we go. That looks into the how, so how do you do what you do? So okay, if we're looking at volleyball, where if I'm saying, okay, we're gonna play a game where we're developing leadership and fair play abilities. Okay, now how do we do that? Well, we're gonna do that by playing various different games, different net, ball, net wall games, and that's how we're gonna do that. So now, what are we gonna be doing? We'll be doing some games here, with some TGFU, we'll be looking at some uh, different type of gameplay activities and actually end off with a tournament because what we're gonna do is take the central idea of why developing uh, fair play and leadership skills and actually filter it through every step of the way. So in the past, I wasn't always thinking about this. So in the past, and I've talked about this earlier, is I was always focused on the what. I was planning, my plan was focused on the day to day. So what were we doing that day, that class, the next day? And more effort was putting into finding lessons and drills and not trying to make that larger connection to an enduring understanding. This actually caused me to brush over the how. So long-term planning didn't communicate my how effectively. How am I going to develop the competencies and the, and the skills needed to be active for life? And how was more teacher focused and lack student and stakeholder participation? I understood the how I was going to do this, but can I, I was leaving my students completely out of the step on this part. I was leaving them out of the planning process. They were just receiving the what. And then why was often a secret. I knew why physical education was important, but I didn't communicate that effectively to my students through my planning. So students and parents were expected to just, they were going to get it by just being part of the class where that wasn't, the, that wasn't good enough for me. So it never made it evident in my planning and it was always reacting to the why are we doing this question. I always get this question a lot in my classes. Why are we doing this? Why are we learning this? Why do we play rugby? Well, we're doing this because rugby is a fun game. That's not a why, that's a reason. So in the past, it looked like this. Now, I'm not saying that this is wrong. I'm saying this is where I was at. Where if I look at my planning, so this, this would have been our year planning. Our big idea was, okay, where are we at? What are we going to be doing? So we'd be looking at, okay, where we have flight football, soccer, wrestling, soccer, wrestling, soccer. This was just the outline of what we were doing that, that time frame. I didn't talk about why we're doing it. Didn't talk to any enduring understandings or bigger ideas. It's just what were we doing? just having the students playing the games, being part of it. And there's nothing wrong with being physically active. But if we look back at that physical education matrix, where we're hitting that activity and movement part bang on, just having well-planned out activities ready to go in, in, a, in a very 
purposeful way. But we were missing on the health and wellness and also the physical and sport literacy development aspect as well, because right here there was no evidence. Even looking into my uh, unit plans, this is my unit plan for track and field, where I was really focusing on the what. What were we doing? How are we gonna do it? Okay, we're gonna work, group one's gonna work on throwing events, group two jumping events, group three running events. And it would just be like practicing those skills. I'm not talking about the bigger idea about why we should be able to do these skills, how these skills connect to other, other uh, activities. There was no connection planned there. It was just really planning out what are we doing, what do I need to do this, and then what did the students need to demonstrate to me to show that they understand it. So why would I change my way of thinking because besides it? Because it wasn't easy. It wasn't something simple. This takes a lot of work and planning behind it. So the one thing I was looking at is I wanted to give myself a professional challenge. I wanted to hold myself more accountable to quality and meaningful planning. I wanted to play out something in front of my administration, in front of my peers to say, we're not doing volleyball. We're learning how to be leaders and how to develop critical thinking skills. We're not playing uh, baseball. We're learning how to use our fundamental skills in a variety of different ways because those ideas, those concepts transfer over to lifelong activity better than just being able to play baseball well. Because if you could just play baseball well, you're just gonna play baseball. But if I could transfer my skills from other sports into different activities, that is where I can, that's where I could help promote lifelong learning because everybody could use that. As, I, as I've gotten older, I've realized like I need to transfer skills I've learned in previous activities into new ones. This also is to increase efficiency and proficiency. Uh, becoming a new father, well, I'm not new anymore, it's four years now, but I was looking at it's like, I need to be more efficient and make things more purposeful. So efficiency and proficiency. Uh, I also wanted to increase student engagement, so in increase participation rates and increase meaningful understanding. I wanted to have the students not to be just a receiver of a product, but part of making the product as well. And also I wanted to increase student progress. Uh, when I moved internationally, one thing I noticed was like physical literacy development, sport literacy development, the fundamentals behind those two concepts were very, very gapped. There's a lot of students that had a lot of things missing and this could be due from just like the transient nation, uh, nature of international teaching of students. I had a lot of students who were below specific benchmarks that were outlined for their, for their age group. So I was really wanting to try to close previous gaps in development and understanding and help these students progress to a level where they should be at. So why focus on the why and not the what? <clears throat> One of the things I looked at is, okay, if I'm gonna start focusing on the why, I need to tie these to three things. I want to promote an understanding. So even though a student may not be able to dribble a basketball, I want them to understand the purpose and the benefits of engaging in a sport like basketball, of engaging in a sport that they're not used to. I, I want the students who are not the most skilled to have that understanding that they can be active outside of the classroom without my support. So they can really rely on their understanding over their competency. They can have that feeling to want to learn to new things. It also promotes values. So communities learn from those, those who remain focused on why and, and what we're learning. Values are more enduring than skills. I'm, I've been active throughout my lifespan because I value physical activity. I value challenge. I want to look at changing my, my thinking from just teaching students how to dribble a basketball to, okay, how can I use this to be active for life? How do I use this to develop the skill of just like teamwork and leadership about how do we just lead people throughout a friendly game or understanding why we need to be active for life. I also wanted to make the bigger picture a lot more obvious. So students and teachers have a solid understanding what the end product is. I wanted the students to be part of that journey and then oh, they can easily be part of the process. So I looked at finding a way to get the students more involved with that aspect as well. When I started doing this and I saw some really unexpected results. So first off, my student incre or increased student engagement changed. Uh, whenever I get new students, I get, for, get the stories from the G before. It's like, ah, oh, they never changed for PE. Oh, you're going to have so much fun with this kid. He never did this. It was often those students that I had at the end of the year where they're like, I loved PE. I, before, they're like, I hate PE. They'd be dragging their feet. But at the end, they loved it. Students were getting why we were doing this. They were part of the process. They understood the importance of doing it. And then all levels, levels of student ability were seeing the picture. It wasn't just our high level athletes who were in our classes, where our students who were already skilled, it was everybody. Everybody was seeing the benefits and why we were doing these activities. I also saw an increase in student progress, where I had students who were, who were missing some physical literacy fundamental movement skills, 
actually improve and increase their range of abilities and skill within one year. And it was just amazing to see. But this is also part of that increase in that meaningful understanding. And then also an increased efficiency. So I was getting more work done in less time. And it was a smooth and simple development. One of the things that I, I really set forward myself in terms of keeping a personal life balance is I do not do work at home. Home is here. Work is here. It's not fair to my family if I bring work home. And obviously right now with uh, the virtual teaching, that might be a little difficult to balance. And we might not have that option. But setting clear boundaries for myself was I need to be more efficient. So I didn't have to bring those things home to do at home because that's my family time. So how can purpose be brought into planning? <clears throat> so there's four, four concepts in how we do, how we look at this. So we look at why we're learning this. So the central, central idea or concept, the big connection to the outcomes and the types of learning experiences. Okay, why are we doing this? What is the big picture that we're looking at? If I'm looking at developing um, just under critical understanding and cognitive thinking, all right, here's our central idea. I want to be able to understand tactics and strategies. How am I going to connect this to my personal outcomes? So all of us are given outcomes from our school, from our governments that we have to, out, that we have to connect to. So how does this connect to those outcomes? And then what are the type of learning experiences? What type of pedagogical experiences am I gonna be trying to use to, to influence and impact this learning environment? And then two, what's my central idea of, of a development? So again, that why concept, why are we doing this? Connection to our specific outcomes, and then what are my task specific criteria to show success? Paint the big picture. What do students need able to do at the end to show me success and progress in learning? And then how can we see growth? So, what, how am I going to be doing this? This is where that how comes in. Assessment methods for what will be used. So assessment of as and for learning. How can I get students part of the process of assessment? How can I get students to do assessment with their peers and with themselves? And how can I give a summative assessment at the end that shows accurately how why the students are learning this and their progress? And what type of tools and products will I be having to use or having the students produce? And then the last one is four, so what are we going to do? So what do I want the students to complete by the end of the unit? And how can the lessons support growth in all students? So I've actually flipped my, my thinking on this, starting with the why we're learning this and develop working backwards to what are we doing? What are our day-to-day -day processes that we're going to be using to learn and carry on this, our development? So my first draft of this was a seven page unit plan. And this really worked well for me because I could see where my outcomes are. I could see where all my task specific criteria are. I could see where my standards fit in. I could look at the inquiry based questions. I could even look at all the specific lessons. But this was a lot to look at. This was actually quite big and quite large, quite clunky. It was okay for me. But I was like, if I wanted to have other people following along in the, and bring a purpose to the planning, this needs to become a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more simple, and not just clunking big like this. Seven page unit planning was huge. So after a lot of working and playing around with it, I've actually broken it down into just, a, it could often be just a once or two sided one page document where we look at our, what's our unit, the unit plan? What are our bigger ideas? What are our central, like where's our why? How are we gonna be doing this and looking at the what? So this actually will take me right to another link and this is provided I'll provide the link for the products in uh, in our chat so this actually breaks down so this is the actual unit planning template and guide so the first page is actually gonna be very simple so we actually break down okay why are we doing this so what is the title of our unit what is our connection to our big curricular outcomes and what type of learning will be taking place so what pedagogical approaches will I take is this gonna be students student or teacher centered but then here we have our central idea of develop, development. Why are we doing this? So what is the purpose of the unit of inquiry? Why are we playing basketball? Why are we playing volleyball? Why are we doing flag football? What is the, why, what is the major purpose? So now that we have our big idea, our central idea of development crafted, okay, what are the specific outcomes that are gonna be connected to this unit? Again, checking off our curricular outcome boxes. And then what's the task specific criteria? So what are the performance based tasks expect to be demonstrated by the students at the end of the unit? So what should I be able to have the students be able to show me that they can do to show progress or have the students demonstrate or, or understand so that I can see that progress has taken place. And then we look at the types of assessments. So what types of assessment, how will I be gathering evidence of learning? Where we have the formative assessment. So how do I gather feedback to support student learning? Am I going to be using peer coaches, reflections, video analysis, guided feedback, learning maps? What type of tools will I be using to give feedback to students as we're progressing through the unit? 
And then we have our summative assessment. How will we gather evidence of student learning? So assessment of learning. So this is where we have performance rubrics, holistic rubrics, skill performance. I'm a big fan of rubrics. Um, I feel like they give a larger picture and, and better feedback to students when they're properly developed. So how are we going to be gathering that evidence of learning? So this first page of this document is all about crafting the why and the how. Why are we doing this? What is the importance behind this, the central idea behind it? And then we look at how you're going to be gathering the evidence to, to demonstrate learning or provide feedback. How will we be doing that? And then the back page is all about the what. What are the learning experiences or lessons that will be provided? So you've actually flipped my understanding with this. So here, I don't start with what's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to start with what is our final activity? We're going to outline what is the final activity, how, what is it going to be like, and then what resources are needed to make it happen. Start with your end in mind. If I'm going to have play a, a, a softball unit, my final activity might be, okay, we're going to have a, have a five-game World Series tournament between the two teams, and they have to coach each other and work each other around it. How, and this is going to be my final product, where they have to demonstrate to me competencies by taking care of their own team, making batting lineups, using strategies. And then from back from that, I'm going to scaffold backwards. So what is the learning activity is going to be used? What is my intended learning outcome? And then what do I need to make it happen? So I'm going to actually work backwards all the way to the very beginning of the unit. We'll be the first thing I do that unit. So starting with the end in mind and working backwards. So I've used this process when we're in school, and this works great for in person. Uh, there's also one where if I had, if I want to use inquiry questions, so I use inquiry questions to help guide my instructional practice. And I've just added those to the top of this other page. So starting the journey, what type of questions we'll be using to help students like tune in, finding out about the sport more. How am I going to be working and questioning to help them through their experiences, bringing them out to the end, and how can I help them question what they're going to move forward with? But still, the whole the sequence is still the same. What are they going to be doing at the end? And then what do I need to do to build myself up to that? But right now we are all virtual teaching. Most majority of us are virtual teaching. Where I'm actually going back to the classes, we have students coming back on May 11th. So before that, I've been using actually this concept. So I've been actually taking a look at and looking at the e-learning guide and using different pedagogical practices and actually changing how this works. So my final learning product is still there. So final learning product, okay, what is a final learning product you'll take in to assess the learning and then what will students need to complete to do the task? And then I've actually worked it backwards again. So I've actually looked at it from a week to week perspective. So week four, so starting with week four, what is the big idea to explore this week all the way down to week one? How do I introduce this? What is my big idea to, for, to, for this week? So this is actually divided into synchronous and asynchronous styles. So synchronous is where teachers are delivering the content live and is often on in live time, where asynchronous is where students are sent off to do the work on their own, come back. They could always ask questions through emails or through chats, but they're often left to, to complete an activity on their own. Synchronous is where I could be doing like virtual meetings, videos, social interactions, supporting for students. Asynchronous is just exploration tasks, learning experiences or learning routines. And then at the end of the week, what product should the student submit to formatively check their learning? How do I check to make sure that the student got what we're teaching? Right now, it's very difficult because I can't see students move. I can't see the student's body language or have that conversation with them. But what can I check to see if they got what they're supposed to get? So there's kind of like the template for that. But now... How can this be applied to physical education? Now, how does this look like in live time? So I've actually given you two examples on my unit. So this is a fielding and striking unit, which I developed before we, we actually had our school shut down. And this is using the same process I've used to help guide my instruction and my teaching. So if we're looking at our connection to our outcomes, our big ideas here are engagement to personal challenge, critical understanding, having students critically understand what's going on, what are our fundamental movement skills? What are our application of skills? And what's our teamwork and fair play skills? And then the types of learning. So teaching games for understanding. I'll be looking at softball TGFU type games, cricket TGFU type games, and then using the sport education model as well. So peer coaching, team development, coaching, coaching development, having the students get the, the skills to run their own teams. So, and then what's my central idea of development? As I develop my skills and understanding, I can execute strategies that involve myself and others. So I'm looking at that teamwork, fair play, that critical understanding, that application of uh, fundamental movement skills. 
in my specific outcomes. These are actually curriculum statements right from our governing body. So this is what we have to cover throughout the year. So here I'm just checking off that box to show that these are connected to curriculum statements. And then what is my, stat, my task specific criteria? This is gonna be unique to each unit. So they select level engagement that fits their abilities, they create opportunities to make play, to make themselves part of the game. Those are specific tasks that students need to be able to demonstrate to show me that they are learning and progressing throughout this unit. Now, what types of assessments am I going to be using? I've had different uh, products to help the students uh, give themselves some feedback. So here's their peer coaching reports, their scouting reports, reflection forms, video analysis, and learning roadmaps. Breaking down, okay, how can I give the students more control and more accessibility to the learning process and to the assessment feedback process? And, but then ultimately, I have to give them a mark that goes into their grade book, which goes to the report card. So I have a fielding striking games rubric and then the scouting report as well. So scouting reports would be used to give a little pre-assessment for, okay, where are they at in terms of all the tasks I've asked them. And then the fielding striking games rubric would be actually used at the end to give the students a mark. But then I have, then I go on to the what. What are we gonna be actually doing? So I have my questions to already guide my instructions. So what do we already know about the sport and game? What are activities or the sports that are similar? Help them to kind of take back some previous learning. What is the most important thing about understanding this activity? How do you feel about your improvement in this unit? And then what can you apply in other activities and sports? <clears throat> so those are the questions that would help guide my instruction. Now my lesson plans would actually be, okay, here's my final activity, softball World Series tournament. They're gonna be having a World Series tournament. This is for, well, I have like some old trophies. I call them the Ferguson Cup. They're gonna be playing to see what team gets to put their name on the Ferguson Cup and my softball equipment. Now, how do I scaffold backwards to make this happen? Okay, well, we're gonna play, be able to have to play a full game of softball before that. So the rules and rules of the game is gonna be my focus of that lesson. So gloves, bats, balls, all the resources. Just because it's here once, doesn't mean I need to only do it once. I would often do this until the students get it. If they don't understand the full game of softball, we can't play softball world series because we'd be too busy trying to teach the more the fundamentals of the game instead of playing and participating in the game in its natural state. But then we work backwards from that. Okay, a small side of softball game. So evaluate skills and team selection. So how are we gonna be selecting fair teams and doing a little final evaluation of skill? Modified softball game, so demonstrate gameplay dynamics. So working backwards all the way up to the introduction and creating student-generated outcomes. So establish routine, rules, responsibilities. Even moving up further, develop, develop the game sense of fielding and striking games. So working towards our final product <coughs> of creating a softball World Series tournament. So the planning is structured in a way where I can, I can accomplish that, working towards my end goal. Focusing on always the why. Why are we learning these again? Because we're looking at, as I develop my skills and understanding, I execute strategies that involve myself and others. Looking at these key connections to the outcomes and our central idea. So this is filtered through throughout the entire planning process. But how does this look like in a virtual environment? So the, my latest unit I've actually, or we're doing right now, we're just finishing up is, we're trying to learn a new skill. So the whole learn a new skill, uh, uh, unit is all about learning a new skill. So we're looking at engagement, personal challenge, application of skills, and critical understanding. But the central idea is how can I teach myself a new skill? <clears throat> Being that we're now in a virtual environment, how can students take the responsibility to teach themselves something new? So here again, a connection to my specific outcomes. And you'll notice that my outcomes, my number of outcomes are a lot, lot less than what they were when I had them live because I was, I, as a professional in the room, I can assess those and take a look at those and provide feedback, but I'm not there anymore. So now I'm trying to focus more on quality instead of trying to get all through my, uh, get through all my outcomes, but also how can students manage the workload as well? So I was also very mindful of that. And then we look at our task specific criteria so they can select the level of engagement that best fits their abilities, can identify when things are not challenging or too challenging refine practice routines and demonstrate progressive learning. Those are my task specific criteria, and this is actually being used to create my rubric. So how did I gather evidence of learning? So I have my formative assessment pieces here, and then my summative assessment, which I have a link to our rubric now, and using all those things we talked about. So here again in my assessment piece, when it loads, are here the big ideas when it loads. 
here are the big ideas that are right here. So engagement, personal challenge, application of skill, critical understanding. So those are the big ideas. Now, how do I take a look at the specific tasks? They select a little engagement that best fits their abilities, can identify things that are challenging to talent challenging. This is what we're looking at within their reflective processes. So as they submit to me their product, they're looking at these areas here. And then we have our holistic rubric. So starting at just like records basic goals and does not determine an approach that is challenging. So as we're doing this unit, I can take a look and provide feedback to the students about what's going on. We could talk about assessment all day, but that's not what we're here to talk about. But seeing how even my assessment tools are now tied back into this, my bigger ideas, my connection to my outcomes, how can I teach myself in a unit? These ideas even filter into how I'm going to be assessing these students. And now the e-learning guide. So how did I roll this out on a, in a activity base? So what was the what behind the unit? So how can I teach myself a new skill? Again, our central idea, our final learning product is a progression video and reflection, four weeks progression video and personal reflection on the learning journey. They have to show us how things progress over the four weeks. That's their final product. Now, how do we get them there? Week one, we brainstormed and explored. So the virtual lesson was just unpacking the project, taught, and they could contact me through email, Google Hangout. What the students had to do on their own was, okay, they had to explore what type of skills were out there that they could do, and then even how to take a vlog. So they could teach themselves how to take a vlog. I, I sometimes don't feel like if, yes, YouTube is a valuable teacher, but what separates me from being YouTube is if there's already out there, I don't have to sit there and tell the students how to take a vlog. They can now use the tools they have in front of them to learn how to take a vlog as well. I just guide the, the learning uh, practice, and I don't really have to tell them what to do. I just guide the facilitation. But then their end week is they had to submit a reflective blog exploring fundamental movement skills. So here we, we worked up. So week two is how to learn a new skill, virtual lesson, how learning and skill development happens. Week three, developing your skill, how to go from good to great. So exploring practice guidelines, what, like what does effective practice mean for you and exploring which type of practice technique works best for you. Then week four is just refining a skill for their performance. So how can you refine and execute your skill so that you can perform it effectively? So again, working from week one, where we introduced it, all the way up to week four, where they're submitting their final product, working from the back towards our goal. Now, there's a lot of things about just even the planning behind it, but when you, you talk about pedagogical approaches, and right now, Pat is actually doing, so one of my good buddies, Pat Hughes, is he's doing a presentation right now on uh, physical education curriculum models. He's actually even put out an ebook. This would be a great ebook to help me craft the teaching strategies I'd be using. Some of us may, this would be a great resource for, because this offer is about, I think there's, he outlines six different pedagogical approaches, which can be used to help teach larger concept ideas and not just what you're doing. So if you haven't uh, seen his ebook yet, I definitely would recommend it. It's, I have actually posted it in my uh, resources that are available from this presentation. So this would be a great resource to add and on to what you've already been taking away from just like planning with purpose. How do we plan with purpose? Well, we have different pedagogical approaches. So Pat's done a really great job outlining these pedagogical approaches and I would highly recommend this book to anybody who would be interested. But here's the thing about this Planning with Purpose project. Now, not all of us teach only PE. We teach different subjects as well. <clears throat> and the thing that kind of blows some people's mind is you could take stuff in physical education or the course and put it into a different one. Whoa. This can be applied in any course content. This could be applied in any curriculum, any type of uh, learning situation. This could be, this is so flexible, it could be applied anywhere. Now, I want to show you an example about how I use it because I also teach social studies as well. <clears throat> so this has been actually one of my recent units where I've used the same concept, the same strategy, same outline. How does this transfer into another uh, topic? So if you look at this, what is my unit of inquiry again? Starting with my big idea, comparing mixed and market economies. So what are my connections to the outcomes? So what are the values of economics and the roles of unions? Types of learning, case study comparison, civic mirror application, persuasive argument, which is better. So the central idea of development is fostered here. So how do the values of different economic philosophies meet the needs of the citizens? What is the big idea I'm trying to teach with comparing mixed and market economies? 
these are just my connection to my outcomes, like principles of market economy, why do governments intervene? These are statements right from my government, uh, government guide. And then the task specific criteria is like a hey, skills of critical thinking, creative thinking, historical thinking, decision making. Those are the task specific skills students need to be able to do to be successful in this unit. Now, how am I going to assess what they're learning? These are all the different products they had to submit to me to show me that they got the concept. So we have our vocab and trading, our concept trading cards. I have used a different variety of different forms of assessments for the students to show me that they understand and get the product. And then going into my summative assessment, okay, persuasive response, which system works best for our nation, where we have a persuasive argument where students have to justify why they feel one is better than the other. And then we have a unit exam. We actually have standardized, well, the standardized tests are canceled this year. But in the past, we've had uh, provincial achievement tests, which students had to write in grade nine. So it would have been a test modeled after one of those tests to give the students experience in, in that type of assessment practice. And the same thing as the previous one. What is my final activity? So economics units exam, so the PAT style one. And then before that, <clears throat> okay, how do we build them back into that? Okay. I always like to do my persuasive papers before an exam because I find it's always a great way for the students to review without studying. Kind of kills two birds with one stone. So here they had to write which system works best for our nation where the students actually are in charge of running their own governments right now. I give them a virtual, uh, virtual country on this platform called Civic Mirror and it's great. They have to manage the economy, they have to manage resources, vote people in, vote people out, deal with crime things like that. They all have to do it on their own and I'm just kind of the omnipotent presence watching the learning happening. The focus of my project, demonstrate critical understanding economic policies, they had to write for me this project. Again, then moving backwards to the concept, recognition of workers' rights, what's my focus, workers' rights and liberties. Again, working back to, okay, what is our initial understanding, so our pre-learning and understanding of the concept, vocabulary and concept trading cards, what values shape economic policies, working backwards from there. So this is an example of how even this planning process can not just be used in physical education, but in any other topic as well. Now, as, like, as we're all in e-learning right now, e-learning is something that has been kind of challenging for everybody. There's been really no warning. There's been limited communication from the governing body about the decision to close schools. We weren't really giving any warning. So we we're kind of thrown into e-learning just like everybody else has been kind of thrown into e-learning. Some schools might have seen what was happening around the world and had some time to prepare for it. A lot of us have been throwing into it. So this is where we really need to bring purpose into our planning, especially with our e-learning environment is if we're doing things without a reason, our students are not going to be wanting to be motivated to do it. Students need to understand the reason why they're learning something. Because if they're not, students are going to be lost because they're not, they're not, they don't have people there to guide them. So the one thing we need to remember is that sometimes our students are going to be lost. And without that, <clears throat> now on the rest of the presentation, I kind of talked about just like how I rolled out e-learning, but we wanted to sit here and talk about purposeful planning. So I'm hoping that I answered it and unpacked our purposeful planning quite a bit. Sorry, I actually missed a couple of slides here. So actually one of the things I've done is actually taken this whole concept and actually published out an ebook. I've actually put, if you click on here, the link to the ebook's gonna be right there. I'll provide the link to our ebook in our chat. So this ebook actually gives you a link to, okay, what are the theories and the concepts behind purposeful planning and how could this be applied in any content? You'll also get access to like editable templates where like the examples I've shown you, you can make your own templates and push those out for your students to see them as well. And you could even use them in your next uh, in your next department meeting. This gives you access to editable templates and gives you the steps to even just take this concept and bring it into your own practice. Um, it's on Teachers Pay Teachers. I'll provide a link for it even if you have the, the, the presentation in front of you. You can click on this image. It'll actually take you to Teachers Pay Teachers and you can access the ebook there as well. Now, if you have any questions, always feel free to contact me. Um, my email address is jace.ferguson at tincanphysette.com. You can always find me on Twitter, uh, Instagram. You can always find me there as well. Um, I'd be more than happy to help anybody out with any questions they have or even just to help you with this understanding of, okay, how do we bring why are we learning this to the forefront and bringing purpose back into our planning? What is the bigger, bigger idea that our lessons are connecting to? If you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you do not, I'm pretty sure we'll be opening up a backroom chat after if you, have, if you want to talk about this even a little bit more. 
I appreciate you, everybody coming and spending some time with me today virtually and hope you guys have a great Phys Ed Summit that's coming up. We have a lot of things that are coming up that are going to be great. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a good day.